I have noticed that phrases like building the kingdom or growing the kingdom of God continue to dominate many Christian ministries. But is this what Jesus or his apostles ever taught? In the New Testament, Jesus defines the word kingdom as something other than himself that is always at hand, coming soon, near, but never already here. This is what Jesus calls the good news or the gospel about the kingdom of God. Mark 1, 14, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Luke 8, verse 1, Jesus traveled from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. Matthew 24, 14, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. By the way, similar to the synoptics, John uses other terms to talk about the gospel as the word or the words of Jesus and kingdom as, quote, eternal life or literally life of the age to come. For example, Peter says to Jesus in John 6, 68, you have the words of eternal life. The apostolic mission is to proclaim or preach the gospel about that coming kingdom, which now includes the name of Jesus, that is, the ministry of Jesus, including his death and resurrection, Acts 8.12. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. This means that Jesus alone is not the whole gospel. For example, many Kingdom Now ministries love to misquote Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 as saying that the death, resurrection of Jesus is the whole saving gospel. But note that Paul calls the resurrection of Jesus among items of first importance and not just the most important, as many mistranslate the Greek in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. This means that for Paul, the death and resurrection of Jesus is not the whole gospel. As a matter of fact, earlier in this very letter, Paul warned the church at Corinth to wait until the Lord comes, that is, when they themselves will be raised from the dead. And then Paul asks this church, are you already satisfied? Are you now rich? Have you become kings while we are still nobodies? I wish you were kings, then we could have a share in your kingdom. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 8. So let us be careful. Preaching or proclaiming the kingdom gospel does not mean we are building or spreading the kingdom now. These kingdom now ministries also love to misuse Jesus' parable of the mustard seed. But note that the parable comes on the heels of the parable of the sower, which is about spreading the seed, that is, preaching or proclaiming the word, which Matthew 13 verse 19 describes as the message about the kingdom. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and do not understand it. And again, this spreading or preaching of the seed message about the kingdom should not be confused with the way Jesus has already defined the word and kingdom concept. This is what the apostolic mission was rooted upon, the commandment by Jesus to teach all nations to obey everything he said, Matthew 28, verse 20. To summarize, like the Old Testament prophets before him, Jesus clearly defined the kingdom as a future event that is the restoration of Israel. The apostles understood this well, hence their question to Jesus in Acts 1 verse 6, has the time come for you to restore the kingdom to Israel? 
So that kingdom is always at hand, near, but never said to already be here. The apostles diligently followed the parable of the sower model, which is all about spreading the seed, that is, preaching or proclaiming the word that is the message about that soon to come kingdom on earth. Again, Matthew 13, verse 19. The Christians should stop conflating, confusing the idea of telling the church to behave like kingdom people now, as Paul commands in Romans 14, verse 17, with that future kingdom on earth.